my only prediction of the tournament. One of these teams will lose an overtime game. I think that's safe. All right. You know, you talk about this being for the championship of the Mideast. A five-minute overtime, Billy. 4.49 left in it. I think the key is, is it the championship of Kentucky, which will be something they'll talk about much longer. Kentucky will get one timeout in the overtime, Billy, due to the rules. Louisville carries theirs over. They have three. And here's Turpin back in the game, playing down low. Very conservative defense now by Kentucky. Not taking a lot of chances. And overtimes usually take one of two uh, styles. Either you get a lot of scoring or you don't get much at all. They play conservatively. And it looks like because of Kentucky's defense being conservative, Louisville's going to be conservative on offense. Remember now, Turpin is playing with four fouls in this game. And Kentucky changes to their 1-3-1 trap. Try to pick up a little bit more pressure on the ball. Hurt also in there with four. Three, check that. It's Minifield with three. Here's the shot. Gordon hit the shot to tie it or give him the lead, and now to give him the lead again in overtime. And remember how effective Louisville's press was all that time, and when Kentucky started throwing it over the top. Gordon with the steal. He'll put it up. Boy, is he playing well. He's tough to handle. He takes it inside. He can just jump over a guard. 22 points for Gordon. Scooter McRae reach in on her. Kentucky's going to have to come out and pressure the ball. They're going to have to go back to man-to-man. -to -man. Boy, that was kind of a subtle way of slipping up on him. They were very quietly attacking, all of a sudden exploded. Yeah, I think what happened there to Charles Hurt is the fact there's so much noise in the gym, he couldn't hear the man. Master. That's three on Master. Okay, here we're going to see the steal. Turpin, really not a ball handler in that part of the area of the court. Lancaster Gordon gets it. I said he... And then Kentucky going down. You see that normally Charles Hurt would have heard the man coming behind him and he would have shifted the ball to the other hand. Look at the great play there by Scooter McRae. What an athletic move. At the line with 10 points, Charles Jones. We had a substitution. Turpin coming out of the ball game. Kenny Walker replaces him. The reason for that, they need to get some pressure on the ball. Being behind, Joe Hall has got to get defensive pressure. Jones gets some both in. Boy, are they often moving in this overtime. 68-62. Give the Louisville kids some credit. Normally when a team ties you up at the buzzer, they come out with the emotional leverage in the ball game. And here Louisville sat right back down. Oh, another turnover to Scooter McRae. And Caster Gordon. Louisville wisely now plays the clock instead of worrying about more points. Boy, Joe B. Hall's got to be frustrated. Tying it up at the last second, and now down 68-62. Many field with a steal. Walker, Scooter McRae with a rejection. Jim Master rejected by Jones. Many field. Rebound, Jones. Bill Whitener. Kentucky could use a timeout here, Gary. They've got to get themselves reorganized. They're trying to get it all back at once. They should have taken the time. They only have one, but they're not going to get it now. now. They needed the time there to settle this game back down. Joe Hall's limit, but they really needed to take that time out. Have you ever seen a team ignite like they have in this overtime? Louisville just blowing them away right now, 70-62. to 62. Well, we could have one team return to the Final Four. There's a possibility that three of last year's Final Four could be there. They're still in it. There's another foul on Master. That's his fourth. It's an eight to nothing score in overtime. Kentucky hasn't scored yet, and Louisville, eight quick, very impressive points. I think it'd be smart, even with the clock stop right now, and even though Kentucky only has one timeout, to go ahead and take it and settle their clock back. There's still a minute and 41 to go. You've got to get reorganized. Gary Cord comes out, Peel comes in, Kentucky with four turnovers in this overtime period. Milt Wagner, now 11 points, nine of those coming in the second half. You speak of a second half as now Ferrum replaces Hurt. Lancaster Gordon in the second half, Billy, 16 of his 22 points. The basket that gave him the go-ahead, then the first basket in overtime. Wagner. 
It's now 10 to nothing in this overtime. That's kind of amazing. As I said, I thought the momentum would be in Kentucky's favor after hitting that one at the buzzer. Jim Master 5 of 5 in this second half. There he misses. Jones again to the rebound. Kentucky a little disorganized right now, and it's really caught for them. Here comes Gordon. Wagner wants the dunk. Fourteen points for Wagner. Unbelievable overtime performance by the Cardinals. The quickness of Louisville. I talked to Vic Bubis before this game, and Vic said he thought Louisville would win because somewhere in the course of the game, quickness would prevail. And it took an overtime for it to take place. Danny Crum trying to go to the Final Four for the fifth time in his coaching career. Almost got a foul now. You got a foul. You got a foul. 12 to nothing in overtime. going to take the timeout. Arab. Head down. That foul is going on many field. His fourth. 42 seconds left in overtime. Deville has outscored Kentucky 12 to nothing in this overtime. Billy, have you ever seen an overtime turn around like this? Well, they take all different kinds of styles. I've seen most of them, but uh, I, I was shocked in the fact that I thought Kentucky would have the momentum. I really did. They came back, and uh, when you tie one up like that, you normally come out in that overtime with the other team deflated a little bit. But Louisville just has not given up, and you can see some heads are down. And how many times, Gary, do we see this in the tournament? You know, one team has got to be the loser. Horde and Hurt playing their last game for Kentucky. Milt Wagner with 15 points, 13 of them this half. You know, we talked about the guards in the first half. They hit 3 of 11 for Louisville. Look what Wagner and Gordon did in the second half. They took over. 14 to nothing. And look, at they keep the pressure on so they don't give Kentucky a chance for any easy basket. Many field, and they finally break the ice here in overtime. Back to Gordon. Gordon in the second half has scored 28 points. Here is Master. A little too trade, late to trade baskets, though, and here they come, the two guards again. Danny Crum is to the final four for the fifth time. Goaltending, but it's academic. Yeah, he was goaltending, but I think that was just icing on the cake for Charles Jones. Very much underrated player. He's asked to play guys two, three inches taller every game and seems to get by. Neal commits a foul with four seconds. That's a smart play by Lancaster Gordon. I thought just out of enjoyment he was going to go down and dunk it, which would have been a technical foul. Denny Crum is taking out his starters. In a way, it's kind of tough for the Kentucky kids who played such a great game to see that the score of this game is really not indicative of how tight it was for so, so long. Well, they'll play the winner of Villanova-Houston when we pick up the action on Saturday in Albuquerque. In either case, they're not going to have room to celebrate because in, Lu in Houston and Villanova, you've got two clubs that can come after them just as tough as Kentucky did. We want to thank the people who worked so diligently to get this game ready to go. Our executive producer, Kevin O'Malley. Our producer, Mike Burks. Our director, Sandy Grossman. They captured the emotion. They captured what this classic was all about. And Louisville will be remembered as the winner the way they turned it around in overtime.